Well, to an exclusive report now here at Redacted. The film that you are about to see is jaw-dropping, and it was passed over by the New York Times. The New York Times had an opportunity to run this story, and they didn't. And we are here now at Redacted going to run this story. We're going to show you this unbelievable film in just a moment. But what's more astonishing, however, might be the cover-up and the secrecy of this top-secret film. My guest today is John Stewart, former candidate for Illinois governor in U.S. Congress. He spent more than five years investigating, proving the provenance of this alleged film, this top secret film, which we're about to show you um, and which you are about to see. And it purportedly shows an alien, an extraterrestrial biological entity being interrogated at the S-2 facility in 1997 by members of the U.S. military. Yes, an alien creature being interrogated by members of the U.S. military. And just a few weeks ago, our guest, John Stewart, hand-delivered his entire investigation to Congressman Tim Burchett's office. And he's become the first non-government civilian to submit a report to the United States Congress regarding the extraterrestrial phenomenon. And John joins us now. John, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you here on Redacted. You, Clayton, it's an honor, and uh, it's an honor at any time uh, anyone is willing to listen to uh, this bizarre and incredible journey and investigation, and I am honored to be on your show and, and able to t tell your viewers and listeners um, my journey and uh, expose, with, without a doubt, the greatest cover-up in human history. So we're going to show this film in a minute, and it's about two minutes and 57 seconds long, this film from 1997. We're going to walk through it, and you're going to explain to our viewers exactly what we're seeing. But I do want to provide some context here on how uh, this film came to be, how you got your hands on this film, um, and the, uh, the cover-up surrounding this film. So how did you first learn about this, this interrogation that took place at 1997 at the S2 facility? Like most people back in uh, in 1997, this was part of, or this was a, you know, a documentary that came out, and I was living this baller lifestyle. You know, I had a black Porsche, a powerboat on Lake Michigan, living in the 36th floor of one of the, the hottest real estate markets and areas in Chicago. And and I say that not to impress anybody, but to impress upon people. You know, I go to sit down and watch this documentary thinking alien interview. This is going to be like a weird humanoid looking person handing a clipboard over to a general at the Pentagon for a job interview. I mean, this is how my brain was thinking. And I'm sitting down and 30 minutes into this documentary, this footage comes on. It's not professionally done. It doesn't have any cuts. There's people in the foreshadow. This gray alien is bone color, bone, like human bone. It's got round eyes, not point, you know, almond shaped eyes. You know, if I'm hoaxing a video of a gray alien, it's going to be gray and it's going to have the typical almond eyes. And this bizarre physiological monitor next to the bean that goes up and down and not across the screen. And then Victor, the alleged whistleblower who claimed to have helped smuggle this out of Area 51. 51, that's the way insiders talk of Area 51. And um, and I, I, you know, I've, I, I had a psychologist tell me that I've probably encountered 10,000 people in my life with um, wrestling and, you know, in, in the automobile industry and in politics. I've never heard anyone this intelligent in my life. And I don't think a 23 year old screenwriter in 96 could have made up this script that Victor was talking about. I mean, the vernacular he used was bizarre. And he used a term called medical flagging. The creature starts to medically flag. And I asked my old uh, doctor uh, who was about 65 years old at the time in 97 on my annual checkup. I said, what is med medically flagging? He looked at me, he goes, he goes, where did you hear that from? That's like a that's like a, a army medical term we used in the 50s and 60s. I'm like, wait a minute, what is going on here? And then there was some weird, an acronym on the bottom, DNI, David November Igloo slash 27. And, and Victor tells us that was the Department of Naval Intelligence. So I run for Congress two years later with this film in the back of my mind going, what is going on here? 
and I don't want to say his name anymore because I'm, I'm getting admonished for doing so, but I was on a political bus tour and I went up to a senator during a break and uh, who has passed away now. And I said, Senator, what is the Department of Naval Intelligence? And Clayton, are you looking in my eyes? This guy went from jovial, happy senator to this aggressive look. And he looked at me, he goes, you don't need to know anything about that. And he stormed off and he never talked to me the rest of the tour, uh, which was a weekend. And I'm thinking to myself, and Clayton, you're a journalist, you're an investigative reporter too. I'm thinking, wait a minute. I got a hoaxed video with medical terminology the from 50s and 60s. I've got a gray alien that's tan and round eyes, medical staff that are in short sleeve scrubs and not in biohazard suits to really hype up the video. I've got a I've got a monitor that I have never seen in, you know, 35 years of, of my life back then. And I've got three letters on this hoaxed video that has just pissed off a United States senator. What in God's name is going on with this film? I think we probably uh, we've we've let our audience wait long enough, but I absolutely wanted absolutely. to provide the deep context on this film so that you're not just watching this film without any context and knowing the names of the individuals who were in the room, uh, people who were there at the time and the verification of that, all of that processing there. Um, the New York Times piece of this, them saying we believe you, we believe the veracity of this. So you have all of that. Now, let's play the film. So here it is. This is, again, it's silence. There's no audio on this. What are we looking at here as we play this film? What are we seeing on our screen, John? Okay, contrary to, to Victor's voiceover, um, this is a film uh, shot April of, two, of 1991, a thought projection interview of a other gray, designated an other gray, an extraterrestrial biological entity. He is a haploid, which means he, he came with only one sexual chromosome. Human beings are diploids. Uh, for any microbiologists out there, if I'm hatcheting those words, uh, I'm sorry. But this being had only one uh, uh, sexual chromosome. Uh, he came to the S2 Alpha, the official designation of the underground facility that had the, that housed the alien interrogation and retention program. That's the unofficial name of, of what this was. Uh, they call these interview suites the ambassador suites because they do, the government did try for the, the care and did treat these and look at these beings and still do as ambassadors from other planets and other dimensions. And if you hear David Grush coughing on his words, it's because he doesn't want to tell you that some of these beings are from other dimensions. And um, so this being was very ill at the time. He had a respiratory issue. Now, Sean David Morton also heard, for, uh, also heard I can't verify this veracity, that it's some sort of uh, uh, debilitation or disease with its heart-lung sac. It does not have a traditional heart. It's got a heart-lung one sac, which was the need for the special monitor, which goes up and down, does not go across, uh, to monitor this bizarre heart-lung one sac organ that the alien has. And um, behind the viewing glass were five men, two telepaths. Uh, there are there are, is a researcher out there, and I don't doubt it. And because I've seen the outline of the figure, um, and I didn't catch this, and someone else did, so I'm crediting them. I don't ever want to not credit other people. That Colin Powell was in that interview room. Now, I know that sounds crazy. I can't verify it, but it certainly looks like the outline of him. It looks like an African-American male in his 50s wearing an Army Class A dress uniform. Funny, the rear admiral that was on my list was uh, the person that uh, reported intelligence to the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Interesting. But that, that's how bizarre this film has gotten. And I'm not even going to tell you anything about the telepath because I don't want it to get into the Da Vinci Code. But even Doty said that the telepathic program, the people they hired, was ridiculous. They were like one step above 1-800 psychics back in the 80s and 90s. Um, but there was two men in particular that were very in touch with these beings, and they would sit down with these aliens and these beings and immediately get information and, and relate it back to whoever, whatever military person was in the room. As you can see on the tape, the, the being eventually starts to, to, to medically flag, if I can use the whistleblower Victor's terminology, and he is then attended to by the medical staff. And, and Victor tells us that the medical staff in S2 and S4, you know, are more chosen for the ability to keep secrets than their medical 
knowledge. And again, I have been in contact. I have the names of the two doctors that are going to be on each either side of this beam. On the bottom, you're going to see DNI slash 27. Uh, that is the Department of Naval Intelligence. According to Richard Doty, there's like a conga line of different agencies waiting to insert this, their questions to this beam. In, a, in the two hour long interview, they, the interviews are, are conducted about once, once a month. Uh, what did you start to piece together from people who were in the room? And so when we say hoaxed video, I think you're, you're, you're saying that that was what the assumption you had going into this, that this was hoax, that was sort of the, the media speculation about this. Now you've proven and taken it to the United States Congress, which by the way, they're about to hold a hearing on this next week. And I think that this is, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be a big piece of this. Um, and other whistleblowers are now confirmed to be coming forward to Congress next week civilian whistleblowers who are going to be testifying of the things that they've been a part of and seen. So talk about the people that you started, the witnesses who were in the room with this creature and how you started to verify the veracity of this film. It was during COVID and for the first time of my life, and I don't say this proudly because I'm a type A workaholic, I had time off that wasn't due to vacation or injury back in my wrestling days. And it just, I'm not saying I was visited, I heard voices, but it's just something my conscience said, you know, you got some time now. Go figure out that film, figure something out. I want everyone to know, Clayton, I did not come at this film. It was a hoax. Was it real? I just wanted to find the truth. And that is my credibility that I didn't push any theory into my own line of thinking. I simply wanted to know the truth. I had information, the film, but I did not have knowledge you know, which comes from being actually involved in this or, or, or even involved in the military or these programs. But I knew that if I went on like a podcast or something, I could start to metastasize my investigation and put it out into the wind, give it the Oprah effect. Maybe somebody would contact me, which has happened to UFO researchers before, that they could give me some insight on this. And, and right before Memorial Day of 2020. One, I went on a Jeff Rents program, and sure enough, three weeks later in June, I started to get an email, or I got an email, received an email from a gentleman. He said, you know, I caught your interview. You, you got some things right. You got something wrong. A month later goes by, I get the same email and, and so on and so forth. And he was emailing me on the same day of the first, uh, that day of the month. And I know from my dad being on the board of directors of a credit union, that that's probably somebody who's involved in a board of directors. And um, and I'm not giving my main whistleblower, uh, you know, identity away. I'm just telling you how prominent this man was. In nine months, it took from him vetting me and you know, emailing me once a month and 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 whatnot. On my birthday, coincidentally, now I'm a public figure. You could find out my birthday, but I think it was pretty bizarre that on my birthday, he sends me, and I'm, I'm I don't want I want don't want to mince my words. He sends me a report of the Defense Intelligence Agency who ran the alien interview and retention program. That's what it's unofficially called in the know. And he had someone inside the DIA send the report of the unauthorized viewing of this film, not smuggled out, not stolen. It was called the unauthorized viewing. And Clayton, my hand was shaking in my car. I was at a oasis in outside of Hammond, Indiana, believe it or not, on a trip. And my hand was shaking because I was seeing names of actual men in, in Wikipedia and Googling them and realizing these are real people. And like Linda Moulton Howell told me when she saw the list, you have gold here. Why? No one has ever heard of these people before. And like Linda said, and these people are on Google and are, are real. And I said, yeah, they are. And she said, you, son, you got gold here. And so I got the list of names, but I, I, I know investigative journalism. That wasn't just enough just to have the names. I mean, come on, that's ridiculous. So I started to vet every single person on the list. The first person was retired working for TRW and TRW. Uh, these are the men, by the way, who were behind the glass in the viewing gallery watching this thought projection uh, interview. That's what, what it's called. It's not telepathy. It's actually called thought projection. And the first one worked for TRW. And I said, well, this is a hoax. He's not, he wasn't even in the military. Sean David Morton, who was in the office of the production company, who first got the call from Victor saying, I've got this VHS tape of an alien. 
said, no, 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 TRW is like hand in hand with the, with the government. They, they do every kind of secret project and, and whatnot. I said, wow, the next name was a, was a, was a, a, a rear admiral um, who, who reported to the Joint Chiefs, was in the Oval Office, I've proven this, and I'll get back to that man. The next one was a captain in Naval Intelligence. I look him up on Wikipedia, he retired a vice admiral. I said, well, this is a hoax. And my, and my one investigator said, John, he was a captain of a Navy intelligence in 1991. He retired, the, the list is from 1991, when this video, this thought projection interview was first made, which was April of 1991. He said, they're giving you a list of the people of the, in that room and their rank at that time. I, I mean, I was blown away. I'm like, you're right. And now he was vice admiral. Clayton, I emailed this man. And we emailed each other back three or four times and we had such a relationship i was going to fly to virginia to ask him to play golf and and go out to dinner and he said well before you you know before you come out what what is your documentary about and i'm like look i i'm a champion of the military i've had relatives in the military i with along with senator mark kirk stopped the closure of the north chicago va in, in northern chicago i am pro-military i said but look i'm going to send you a list I'm going to send you a report that's very disconcerting. Bear with me. Your name's on it. And I sent him the report, you know, the time and date, what, what type of alien this was, his name there. And he ghosted me. And Clayton, in 2022, when you ghost somebody electronically, doesn't that say speak volumes? You know, he didn't call back and say I was crazy. You're nuts. You know, laugh at me. That's not me. That never happened. And I've had military people say, look, men and men and women in the military are honorable. They're not going to lie to you. They just won't talk to you anymore. So they don't lie to you. And that really had me fall off my chair. Like this guy, we were going to go play golf, and now, um, you know, I am, uh, I am, you know, I, I'm, I'm. I'm alienated from his, from his life. I had Dr. Sala email him too. Never laughed at Dr. Sala. Didn't call Dr. Sala crazy. Just said, I'm not interested in, in doing any interviews about anything with my military career. Wow. And you know, the list goes, the list goes on and let me get to the two doctors, the two medics that are, you will see folks on either side of the alien, the doctor on the aliens, right. Our left died in California. I called, please listen to me, folks. I, you know, this, you know, this is, this is such crucial information. I call his second wife, his widow. I'm going to say her name is Kim, but it was a short name. It's kind of hard telling somebody's widow, was your husband involved in alien, you know, autopsies or alien re uh, interrogation or anything to do with aliens, you know, because he was a doctor. And I told her my story very quickly, and she paused. Again, another person that didn't laugh, didn't hang up the phone. She said, John, that's really interesting. She said, for the time that I was married to him, he never, ever spoke about his time in the U.S. Army Medical Corps. I never told her U.S. Army Medical Corps, but that was on the report of what his designation was. And I, which I thought she is correlating this report. She said, all of my, all of our friend groups, they're from Vietnam, World War II, Korea. They all have funny stories about boot camp, uh, you know, or, you know, uh, on assignment other than non-combat related information. They all have funny stories. And my husband ever, never spoke about his time in the U.S. Army Medical Corps, not even to me. And she said, John, your phone call just completely turns the light bulb on and totally makes sense to me now why my husband never spoke about his time in the U.S. Army. Hmm. You know, so I'm like, you know, what is going on here? Now I, eat, now I Google the other doctor's name. He's practicing medicine still in Connecticut. And at the time, he worked for the VA in 91, and we see this creature having some sort of respiratory coughing fit. Folks, pay attention to the mouth. It's opens and closes instantaneously. Listen to me on this. He, um, he, at the time of 1991, this creature's having a respiratory problem. He, this doctor worked for the VA. What did he do and specialize in 1991? He was a pulmonologist. So obviously they brought this man in uh, to, to S2 Alpha. That's the, the official designation of that, of the underground facility where the alien retention interrogation program happens uh, to, to study this creature that, you know, he's having a respiratory problem. Let's bring in an expert and 
who in the VA is, is a pulmonologist and so on and so forth. Uh, he is not that anymore. He is in a different field of medicine. Um, but I, I called his office I, I, and Leslie, Leslie Keene of the New York Times, who I, I presented this story to her and Ralph Blumenthal, Leslie was even contemplating making an appointment and going to visit. And once he, she got him in the room, um, you know, but that never that never maturated and that and whatever. But and then, and then his office just refused to take my calls because I you know, wanted to be honest. I'm working on a documentary and, you know, he must have he must have had some idea what was going on or it was either contacted by someone at the Pentagon. Look, we got a guy. He's going around. He's asking questions and you might get a, and you might get a phone call. And, um, you know, I, I sat on this for like three or four months and I, I, I you know, I didn't know didn't know what else to do. I showed Dr. Sala and then I showed Donald Schmidt, who was J.L. Kynick uh, assistant in Chicago. And he's the first person I, I showed it to. He's the Rosball expert. And he was flipping the pages in a restaurant in Wisconsin with his mouth open. And, you know, he, he basically said, you know, if, if you've got this wrong, nothing changes. If you're right about this list, this changes everything. And then I called Richard Doty and I said, you know, you know, Mr. Doty, you know, I finally got a hold of me. Very nice man to me. Very personable. Hi, Richard. Uh, my name is John Stewart. Do you know anything about the Victor film? Uh, yes, I do. I, I know some things about it. I'm like, wow. Okay. Deep breath. Was it real? Yes, it was real. Uh, I'm, I'm like, it, 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 real meaning it showed an actual off planet extraterrestrial alien being. Uh, yes. And I said, okay. Um, do you know who Victor is? He said, no. Uh, but there was a very disgruntled bunch of people down in S2 and in S4, the other facility. And, and these disgruntled employees, Victor being one of them, help remove the tape. And, and I will tell everyone here, Victor, who kind of said he removed the tape, didn't. It was simply taken out of the S2 facility by the Air Force cameraman. And two copies were made at the Area 51 uh, Groom Lake Photo Lab. And the second copy, the three-minute film was smuggled out in a GSA burn bag. That's how it left. You know, no, nothing, you know, there was no kind of like smuggling like a mule over the, 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 the American border with drugs. And I mean, it was let out almost like an Ocean's Eleven. And Doty said that it was not filmed in S4. There are no alien housing there. The alien housing is in S2 Alpha. And I'm like, what's S2 Alpha? <laughs> She sent me a satellite photo of it and said, that's what it is. It's called the Alien Retention Program. Uh, this being was brought in on a part of Project Pounce. Uh, you know, it's, it's I, Dodie's like, I don't know the provenance of the being, but I think it was from the Kalahari crash where two beings were recovered. And uh, he said, you know, but uh, the entire project has been moved to uh, uh, Dugway Proving Grounds in Utah, where they have now a huge super secret underground facility. Um, S2, S3, S4 are still in kind of a caretaker status, um, but mo the uh, alien program, uh, whether that be the retention, the interrogation, the biological reverse engineering of craft, that all is now taking place at Michael's airfield uh, at the Dugway Proving Grounds. And, and, and uh, you know, and I find an email on the internet from 1999 of the project manager his name was Major Thomas Mack, beloved. It says Richard Doty was our counterintelligence agent for a Project Majestic. And that was the name of this project. Here's the bombshell. The name of the project for this whole thing since 1947 was Project, uh, was the Majestic Program. And the, the program to interview the, the beans in S2 was called Project Aquarius, which was basically all things about aliens in contact with, with uh, human beings. And that is from the email, and that is also from Richard Doty's mouth, who is verified as the counterintelligence agent who is in his 70s and, and wants to tell the story, the, the truth of what's going on and what the government is covering up. I wanted to ask you about the New York Times piece of this. So you brought this to the New York Times. You brought this to Leslie Kane. You brought this to Ralph Blumenthal, um, who, of course, uh, write for the New York Times and, and publish reports in the New York Times. Famously, uh, their their big bombshell report a number of years ago about the USS Nimitz. Um, and you brought this to them. What happened when you brought this to the New York Times? For asking me that because I, I was kind of sworn to secrecy by them. 
um, until the stories came out, and they are out. And I contacted Ralph Blumenthal. I said, I, I have to do this in person. I have to show you my investigation. And I flew to Midtown Manhattan. We uh, we met at the, the Hilton in Midtown uh, August of last year, and we sat there for five, six hours. Um, I debriefed them, basically. Uh, they were kind of astonished that I was old school journalism, you know, getting out of my car, knocking on doors, putting notes on people's cars and, you know, and, um, and uh, you know, we had lunch and, and they said, look, we totally believe you. It, you know, your, 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 your investigation is thorough. It's vetted. It's sourced. But there's no way the New York Times is going to run this story. I mean, you've got a film in a, in a photo of an actual extraterrestrial. And Ralph and Leslie both said, you know, if we could get or you could get a credentialed inside military intelligence official to come forward, which I'm like, that's never going to happen. To my shock, it did. Um, we could possibly take this to the New York Times and run this story. If you had somebody come forward saying that film's real and the whole alien retention interview program is real. David Grush, you know, the story breaks on News Nation. I mean, my family, my wife were like, they're like, John, you're 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 gonna be in the New York Times. This this is what Leslie and Ralph have been telling you. This is what you needed. We have you have it now. And um I I I don't know what's going on. I I you know, um you know, it, but you've heard it's, nothing it's, from them. Uh, and to be clear, they're not staff writers of the New York Times. They are. No. Yeah. So this isn't specifically and the I asked New York her, I Times. Said, yeah. Yeah. And I asked her, I said, well, does this move my story now to the to the forefront? Yeah, I, we have what you said I needed. And, you know, I'll talk to Ralph and, and Ralph, I'll talk to Leslie. I'm not throwing them under the bus. They're lovely people. I, I like them. I, I mean, Ralph, uh, in, in five hours, Ralph Blumenthal became like my de facto uncle. That's how what a genuine soul he is. And I, I love Leslie and we, and we email each other and, and, and I, I, you know, I just, for the life, we don't know, don't know what's going on. I, I have checked every single box, you know, and, and everyone told me Clayton 20 years ago, government, Hollywood, ufologist, if you prove who Victor Watt is, you know, you prove the video and the director and the CEO of this production company said, this guy called us out of the blue. He was a government employee. He was retired. He didn't even drive at the time and produced this VHS tape. I've checked all the boxes. I've got the names. I've got the providence of it. Um, you know, it's in Stephen Greer's one tetrabyte file that he's also submitted to Congress. So it was submitted twice. I think I'm number 240 on the list where it says UFO researchers, you know, information. Um, I, I, I don't know what else to do anymore except, you know, continue to break, try and break through, you know, flying to Washington to hand my investigation to Congressman Burchett, whose office was fan wonderfully kind and nice to me, but to continue to do podcasts. And I, I need the people's help. I, I really do because what David Grush can't tell you, I am willing to tell you today on this podcast that the, the bombshell, I think of my entire investigation, the number 27, we found it on a Ronald Reagan briefing about uh, extraterrestrials from 1980. I call back Doty. This is like right out of a movie. Richard, what the hell is the number 27 mean? Doty, not knowing, you know, what I was talking about, said, oh, 27 is Yankee white. I'm like, what's Yankee white? And he said, John, that's the security umbrella classification. Listen to me, folks. For anybody that briefs the president of the United States. So if you're watching that film you better have the Yankee white security clearance to talk to, which would have been George H. Bush at the time. Now, a person has claimed Colin Powell was in that room. I am telling you that Colin Powell's chief in, uh, intelligence liaison, Admiral Sh uh, Elmer Schaefer, he's the only name I've given up because he's dead, he's died already. He was also in that room and he responded and he was direct liaison to the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and I have proof that he was also in the Oval Office. So that is why the designation 27 is on the bottom of that film. Would a production person in a low-level production company or a screenwriter even think to put that on the bottom of the film? I mean, it's just ludicrous. It's just, this thing just proves itself over and over and over again. Hmm. And so... And if the... you see the mouth of the bean... Yeah. All every FX person is like, I, I don't know how that opens. You you close up on that film and you see that mouth going like this. I mean, we've had ex FX people off camera tell us 
There's no way in 91. You'd see the metal servo around the mouth as a bulge. There, I, this is a slit that's opening and closing. Oh, there's a hand underneath the head of the of the alien. We, we have seen, it because the, the flashlight of the medic shines the entire torso of this being, you see the neck is as thin as a wiffle ball bat. How is somebody getting their hand up there? Um, this would have taken two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars. We know, uh, you know. Again, being the journalist, I found the production budget of of Rocket Pictures. Production budget meaning having them put this out as a documentary, and then they they did a they did their own alien interview as a B roll. Um, wasn't even a, a, a third of that. I know what what they were paid. I know what Victor was paid. There was no money. Uh, there was no three four hundred thousand two hundred three hundred thousand dollar budget to recreate this being. And why is everyone gaslighting me? And, and let me go on to the next thing, Clayton. This is very near and dear to my heart because it's affecting me. You know, uh, you know the, the person from the the uh, that I was hooked that was ready to come on camera said, "Look, you're on a watch list now. Why am I on a watch list if I'm investigating a fake video? You know, fake. Right. The DIA. I called the DIA with my FOIA request." We see your name there, but there's no there's no file. Mr. Stewart, his name was Andrew at DIA FOIA request. I've never seen this before ever. Somebody removed your file. You can't get on this computer with, your, with a name unless you have a file attached. All of a sudden, four hours later, a file is attached. I get a, I get an email. I mean, why admirals ghosting me? Why why is this sending panic and shock wave shock waves through Washington and the Pentagon? Why, if it's a hoax video? That's all I ask people. Don't believe a word I'm saying. Believe the follow-ups of why is this sending panic and and uh, and through the people uh, in the know. Well, you did the work. You did the work that no one better than me. You did the work that no one else would do and confirm that there were men in the military who were in that room, and it wasn't a Hollywood production. It, there were people in that room who signed into that facility. And you've confirmed this, and you've confirmed with the family members who were there and working on these projects. Um, and others have come forward to confirm the veracity of not only your investigation, but also confirming other pieces of information from your, uh, from your investigation. Um, now the, it's in the hands of the U.S. Congress. You've given it over to uh, Tim Burchette's office, Congressman Tim Burchette's office. This hearing is about to unfold in Washington, D.C., what do you expect will come from that hearing, um, and how will will your film will this film be involved in that in any way? Well, this film was already what I was told. So can't I can't verify the veracity. But what I was told that this film was already shown to two congressmen who quote hands were shaking, couldn't even put the cup of water to their mouths when they saw this video. Another congressman saw it. He was just. Made a quote in in, in the uh, in the newspapers in the media last week. I don't really think the American people can handle what I've seen. Um, I I think there's gonna there's just gonna be the soft disclosure as as hard as that is to accept. Um, Clayton, I, I I don't. If you think if you think uh, Joe Biden is gonna walk out an alien uh, at the National Press Club, it's not. I don't think it's gonna happen. Uh, the military sees the technology we ha they have as the high ground. In the Civil War, it was high hills. In 2023, it's this alien technology. And I want to tell the military something. I, and I want to look straight in the camera. I understand that. I understand the secrecy and, and the paranoia, not even knowing what you're really dealing with. I get it. The secret's out. OK, the secret is out and people like me are not condemning you. I actually feel sorry for the people that had to keep this secret from their spouses and their friends and taking it to their deathbed. Um, but no one is championing the military on this. And, and I want to tell the Pentagon and I don't say I say this respectfully. To be honest with you, when I look out in the UFO world, the American people don't trust you. And really, I'm the only friend you got. So, you know. People like me want to help you come out of the closet with the alien phenomenon. Let Congress do what it has to do. Help and assist Congress. I'm asking the Pentagon to do this. We don't need all the secrets. We need to know you lied to us. You covered it up. We will understand why you covered it up and why you lied to us. And like they did in South Africa when Nelson Mandela took over, I, I wanted to get this in. 
I would like to be part of the, of, a, of some sort of a committee. This was a, a thought was batted about by Reverend Michael Carter, who appears on Ancient Aliens, that we need to have a, a, a government citizen committee where we just exonerate everybody in the government for the last 80 years of the money laundering, the potential murders, um, that have occurred to keep the secrets high. Folks, there's no other way to have the military or these government contractors, CEOs come forward than to say, you're not going to jail. We will exonerate you. Tell us what you got. Um, let the American people in. Stop belittling our loyalty and stop mocking um, our citizenship. I guess we'll get you out of here on this, John because it's a lot for people to digest, but what happened to this creature? This was, I had mentioned at the beginning, 1997, I guess that's when we actually saw, we got our, the film was leaked or we were able to get our hands on the film, right? But 91 is this interview with this creature, with this, with this right. alien entity. What happened? Do we know reportedly what happened to this alien? Yes, yeah, so it's funny. Victor brought this film out, uh, uh, a year after he retired. So I thought that was, so he was, you know, trying to clear himself very smart and victor tells us that the creature died shortly after this this interview and uh where is the body you know we we have been told that bodies are being stored at wright pat homestead and sandia labs which is inside the the dugway proving grounds base and you know i mean how many times do you have to examine these beans i mean this has been since the 40s that we've been looking at their tissue and and, and so on and so forth so i i think that uh without being disrespectful to our cosmic brothers and sisters, it, it is kind of it, it is kind of old hat. And Clayton, before I leave, I just want to tell you that uh, you know what no one else has heard, and this was told to me, and I was told that I was one of three people in the world that know knew this. And I'm telling your viewers that the new, and I don't want any general to do a spit take right now. So I'm gonna everybody put their drinks down, but take this to the bank, folks. The new designation by the faction of the government and civilian contractors in this alien retention program, this the majestic program, Aquarius project, the new designation is SABER, Synthetic Astrobiological Extraterrestrial Races. You say this to a general today in Washington who's in the know, he's going to, you know, he's going to look like he swallowed a peach pit. Um, that is the, the designation. And I was never told not to tell anybody. So I'm telling it, Clayton, on your show and and, um, and and that's the new designation. They are some sort of half synthetic robot and biological being with their tissue and organs, and and they appear to be setting it. But that that is that is why they're you know that that is how they were able to travel, uh, you know, great distances and and using all types of propulsion methods like anti-gravity and wormholes and, and string theory. And I, I know I'm chopping this up, but right. um, that they were half, half robot and half, half actual living biological creature. Very, very bizarre things. Wow. Well, John, thank you for all of the, the research on this, the investigation on this. Um, We'd love to have you come back here as the story develops, and we'd love to see what happens in Congress next week with this hearing. Yeah. Um, you know, we thank you for your bravery in this. We thank you for what you've been through with this, and 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 people ghosting you and uh, and trying to drag your name through the mud with all of this. We thank you for for coming here and sharing your story with our audience, which is an open minded audience. And we thank you so much for for all of this. Thank you, John. You're welcome. And thank you, Clayton, because I think this podcast with you and your show and your program um, is going to move the needle uh, on my on my adventure and journey. And I just ask your listeners and viewers, support the military and support the UFO researchers, support Congress. Let's all work together. We can get through this. We can solve this. There are more bizarre stories in the Bible and, and in the Quran and, uh, you know, coming from as a Catholic, uh, you know, that the fact that there's other intelligences in the universe, I don't think is a surprise to anyone. So let's support everyone. Let's come together. Maybe this can bring the country together and let's do what's right. Amen. Amen. Hey, Ronald Reagan thought so. He thought it could bring us all together. Yes. Uh, John, thank you so much. Appreciate it.